It's Mr. Sunday. Hey, come over here. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sunday. Hey there. Okay, see the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my Soul Glad bottle. If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? The moon? You mean the Grand Theater? <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I've been away from home for too long. I must be missing that moon. <laughs> but it's no big deal. The Grand Theater here looks much better than the moon back home. It's just magnificent. They told me not to sell everything I had just to come to Pentaconi. How short-sighted. Selling everything you had? Why would you go to such lengths? Why? Can't you see? Life back home is miserable. It's not really living at all. It's better to be here at Pentaconi. No pain, no worries about tomorrow, just sweet dreams. You can do whatever you want. That's what I call living. <laughs> yeah, now this is the life. Is this truly living? <laughs> huh? What did you say, young lady? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing, sir. You see... The traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idean Park over there, so you can continue enjoying your sweet dream? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Wow, no wonder you are the leader of this sweet dream. You're totally a lifesaver. See you around, Mr. Sunday, and... Uh, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? The man we ran into... He doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only way to survive, even if it means giving up on reality. That's not really living at all. I suppose you have a point. But, in my opinion, that's how most people live their lives. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living, but that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power, and those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, value doesn't come out of thin air, and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, people have to take from others, so the weak get exploited and oppressed. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. But, ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it, because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value. And even the weak believe in it. The survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream in Panacone to escape from that reality and find solace. No tragedies exist here. Only happiness. Although in its nascent form. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? <sighs> Perhaps that man is just an exception. Let's not jump to conclusions. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Reef. Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. you again, Robin. Uh, how are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. Uh, it's going smoothly. Thanks for making the trip to join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. 
It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? And <sighs> not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I mean, I'm not one of those long living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? <laughs> I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin! I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. She had a valid point. I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life. But in reality, she's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. Once she steps out of this sanctuary, everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't she? However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. No, and the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking, isn't it? Oh, Robin. Can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. No. With little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations. Especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said, with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt, but is that why you came to Penacony? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sokozi mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. How heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. They have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support services in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. My true appearance. No. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So... You'll be living forever in this dreamscape, right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Now, whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart. 
and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise, and I'll treasure every moment I spend here. <laughs> How I envy those everlasting things. That old man's story... It's so tragic. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However, even this sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain and reality. There will be a way out. Panacone is already on the right track. <laughs> Look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Wait, is that me? Brother, what a surprise to see you again. Show yourself. Your trick won't work on us. I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation, too. That must be you, right? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. The music of the Harmony doesn't tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. You should be thanking me, because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Penacone would still be in shambles. Don't you think? That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family, and it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, chicken wing boy. But I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni. The land of the dreams! Is this truly the paradise you desire? Stop it. <laughs> What's the rash, chicken wing boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Master Fool. Leave now, or the family won't tolerate you anymore. All right, all right. I'll go. But Robin... I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? <sighs> well, I've done my part. And now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here, the last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show. And it'll be thrilling. Bang! I heard a raven cawing in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams... It shouldn't be like this. Panacone is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality, or bring true happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. That might be true, but... 
Even without Panacone, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he's in a comatose state. And this sweet dream has become sort of end-of-life care. His fate is sealed. Is Panacone granting these people a future? Or is it taking it away from them? Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah, we took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers, and later, when I decided to leave Penacone, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky. Even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? Are you implying that the same goes for humans, too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. That's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just... sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the Harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong and the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness, but it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the Harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? <sighs> people often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. 
Are you reading, sister? What are you reading? Mr. Gopher White gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a chord master, I'd like to summon... Dominicus, the harmonious choir. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. <laughs> I see. Then, I would summon the harmonious choir too. Don't you have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that it includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. Then, let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes come true through the power of the harmonious choir. It's a deal, then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you will have to become a star first. You're back sooner than I thought. Any results? Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. Huh. Since his last will has now been conveyed, my final mission is complete. But pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. The path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude? Staking everything on some nameless in the future. But you have the numbers. And in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Uh, got any more encouraging words? As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals. It won't grant us an upper hand. Hanakoni is our rival's home turf, and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the family's got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most, and since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it... <sighs> Even if we succeed, it's too risky. Hmm. So, no one's gonna say anything? Then I'll raise my hand! I know the answer to this question! Why are you speaking like the General of the Law, Fu? So, I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there'll be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the Soul Glad TM Festivity Auditions, or something. And it's going to be held in the moment of Scorch Sand. As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of Festive Superstar. And be able to personally bask in the graces of Miss Robin. Uh, not that that's important. <laughs> What's crucial is that we can enter the Grand Theater before the audience arrives. So, how do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. Uh, to tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along. But now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. So they're still running this thing, huh? It was originally just a publicity stunt set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. Looks like it might be worth a shot. We'll follow March's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? I'm afraid I won't have the time. 
As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now everyone, let's prepare to move out. As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by banners, you vie for the crown. The sword and rose! Protect the beauty, the beauty, the beauty! Magnificent and majestic! A knight's head is hard as steel. Brother Lance Focus is stubborn as a heel. We don't all have to be winners, but if we don't have fun, <laughs> we'd all be sinners. People are pouring in. It kinda feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. Let's get in there quickly and enter the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way, <laughs> make way. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soulglad's factory, Ideen Lina. My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Mm, hello, everybody. I'm Himiko, a nameless from the Astral Express, and these are my companions. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? I can't hide it anyways. Penacony is plastered with our posters. Because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make any rash moves. Ugh, don't expose my net handle to everyone! Uh, hello, everyone! I'm March 7th! I'm an ordinary girl who loves adventures! Hello, everyone! I'm Firefly. Also, an ordinary girl who enjoys adventures. So it's a bunch of nameless guests. This final face-off is bound to be spectacular. Time is precious. My four friends, come with me. Grab a bottle of Soul Glad and make your dreams a blast. Looks good. This place is buzzing. That's right. This venue is a miniature representation of Atlas.
Nameless, your arrival reminds me of the grand occasion when Pentacony was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind, and that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love today. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentacony. Now then, is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? <laughs> There's that, uh, um, the uh, ever-vigilant, trailblazing spirit we all know. Uh, hey, you should really fix that defeatist mentality of yours. Miss March, how about you? Hello, everyone! Next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speedrun world record! Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March Tabith for you. How about Miss Firefly? I hope that by the end of this journey, everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hoped for. Ah, <laughs> a wonderful wish. Miss Himiko, what are you expecting from your team? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simple words, but full of warmth. Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from, with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. Those are the rules. Simple. Everyone clear? Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started. Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long, and aren't overly familiar with her. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me! Let's do it! Alright, I don't have a problem with that. We'll split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time. Age of Soul Glad Enterprises 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season. Dream Play Fantasia! In this stage, you can choose between two challenges the School of Acting or School of Action. In the School of Acting challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action Challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Now, make your choice.
allow me to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are three stages up ahead. On each, you will find an outline of a script. These three scripts were written by the legendary filmmaker, the watchmaker, and depict various stories from Penacone's era of pioneering. Your task is to bring those moments to life, find the right words, and act convincingly to make the judges feel the script's intended emotions. Oh, I wish you a successful performance. Also, a bit of trivia. The record score for this stage is held by a participant with fiery red hair. His exceptional performance brought even the strictest judge to tears. Oh, it's like he wasn't even acting at all. Uh, we are running out of time, so let's get this over with quickly. Looks good. Oh, just take a look at this pair! Such star quality! Since you come as a pair, I'll prep a two-person scene for you! You two! Are you ready? Envision that you both, driven by the spirit of exploration, are arriving at the land of dreams that is Panacone for the first time. But instead of lush lands, you find yourselves amidst swirling sands and desolation, far from the paradise the watchmaker described. You're driving an old clunker through the wilderness of the dreamscape, braving the cold wind, choking on the dust, and suddenly, a fierce memory zone mean blocks your path. Now, Mr. Greyhair, what line would you deliver to express your disappointment in Pentagony? Very good. Now, though you're disappointed, your screen partner is conversely very enthusiastic. Now, young lady, you will say... Good, very intense. And then we cut to the story's next scene. You find a job mending the rails, but the days are long and your endurance can't keep up. And you finally collapse in the endless expanse of desert. Suddenly, sweet rain falls from the sky, wetting your lips and rousing your spirits. Now, Mr. Greyhair, what line will best express your surprise at this moment? But at this moment, your partner yet gazes into the sky, both her eyes closed. The raindrops fall, blurring her vision, and she tragically says... Perhaps we were never meant to succeed. Fantastic! Both of you have an incredibly solid foundation in dialogue delivery. However, lines aren't everything in a performance. Please continue this story on the second stage. Up next, you'll be challenged with a body language test. I hope these tests won't take too long. Here, you two are required to skillfully utilize body language to portray the story context I've laid out for you. Picking up from where we left off, a heavy downpour saves you both stranded in the desert. This rain quenches the anger in your heart. You look to your companion, now completely devoid of fighting spirit, wanting to comfort her. At this moment, what should you do to make her laugh? Right answer! Your companion sees you rolling about in the sand and thinks about the arduous obstacles along this journey. She can't help but let loose a laugh, rekindling hope in her heart. And so this girl... I'm... 
gonna get back on my feet and keep moving forward. A tug at the heartstrings! The story continues to develop. The heavy rain leads you both to sense a business opportunity. So you start venturing into the umbrella industry. But just as the business begins to pick up, competitors start flooding the market with low-priced goods, squeezing your market share. You have no choice. The goods you stockpiled at high prices have to be sold at a loss. This is a pretty self-destructive move, which drives your business to the brink of bankruptcy. At this moment, what would you, who refuses to admit defeat, decide to do? Fantastic! But it's a pity your friend does not agree. Seeing that you're up to your eyeballs in debt, she sees nothing but despair in her future. And then... Uh... I leave Panacone in utter disappointment! Is that okay? <gasps> of course! Absolutely! I was this close to tears! Both of you possess exceptional acting talent! However, the true test is yet to come. You're about to encounter the harshest judge this show has ever seen. You'll need to rely on perfect performances if you want to win them over. that you previously encountered were all from the film Once Upon a Time in Dreams. Two companions arrive on Panacone with nothing but a dream. Their desire for achievement is met with continuous setbacks. Ultimately, one continues on, despite spiraling into debt, while the other concedes defeat and leaves. Many years later, their paths cross once more in the thriving Penacone. Yet, they refuse to acknowledge each other because... Against the backdrop of a revitalized Penacone, the joy of reunion mixes with the sorrow of past separation, the awkwardness of being strangers, and the shyness of a long-awaited encounter, all converging at this very moment. Give it a shot. Try and convey this bittersweet scene to me. Bring it to life with precise and emotive acting. <sighs> Is this ever going to end? I know. Why don't you try that clockwork thing you used before? Your performance is far from satisfactory. Cut! Huh? We haven't even done anything! It's so... so touching! Your portrayal outdoes the original! It's simply... simply... We have passed the test. We ought to hurry up. Stellaron is at stake.
Is that all? Both of you for clearing the stage, but more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success. Look at the time. You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did. <laughs> that red-haired contestant? Who is that exactly? You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Gunfire time! You have the option to choose Gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial, or Time, where you'll face Clucky's trial. Now, make your choice! Welcome to the wonderful world created by the Watchmaker. <laughs> Awaiting you up ahead is the titular character from the beloved Clocky animation, Clocky! It's said that the Watchmaker dreamed up the idea of Clocky when he was just a boy. Back then, he was merely an apprentice in a clock shop. And one night, he dreamt that all the broken clocks started sprouting arms and legs. Like a skilled pilot, he steered them towards the right path. As a classic figure who grew up with many, Clocky truly shaped a generation, solidifying the watchmaker's pivotal role in popular culture. Contestants, may you have a wonderful time with Clocky. <laughs> the trial of time. <laughs> I hope it won't waste too much of our time. So that's how it works. Exaggeration, but Penacony is actually in danger right now. We have to prevent it at all costs. Sooner rather than later. Oh, another group of opportunistic challengers. Sorry, though I may be a failure of a clock, I still have my principles. You guys are just like the other challengers. You want to enter my inner self? Then please be my guest! But you won't find anything worthwhile! I'm just a failed piece. See? I'm just empty inside! Tick tock! It's time for me to make an appearance! Clocky? Uh. I can also 
see him. Is this character part of the show? In Dreamville, Clocky is everywhere and can do anything! Like, right now! I could solve this problem with your big ticker pal, Tick Tock! I can't believe it's actually Clocky! Why would you come and visit a failure of a clock like me for no reason? You see, we're all clocks. We're family. I want to help you be happy! Tell your pal Clocky what's troubling you. I... I came across a startling revelation yesterday. Apparently, Dreamscape Tinker isn't the same as Clocky at all. It's just a discarded prototype from Clocky's early development. Please, just leave me be, Clocky. I just don't know how to face you. Because I'm just a failure. Oh, dear. Seeing it like this is... Utterly heart-wrenching! <laughs> but fear not! We're here to help it rediscover the missing parts of its inner self and guide it out of despair! <laughs> I guess even troop members can experience existential crises. Don't worry, miss! I've already pinpointed its missing parts! Over here, my friends! Better use that hamster ball night speed! This must be one of the missing parts. We're here! There's a missing part on the opposite side! But how do we get over there? There's also a dream side left here by a dream weaver. We're running out of time. We'll have to use it if necessary. So that's how it works. Is 
Is that all? Help! Tick tock! Do I hear? Tweet! Help! 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 Tweet! This man's body is boiling hot! Tweet! Is anyone there? Tweet! I can't take it anymore! Tweet! Oh dear! It's an origami bird! What's it doing in Beyond Overcook's tail? Is that Corky? Tweet! Please save me! Tweet! I'm being roasted alive! Tweet! A roasted bird? Oh! This is horrible! Let's save it! Quickly! Move carefully. Try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move. <laughs> Try that again. Savor the vigor of life. My turn. Watch this. <laughs> Try that again! The truth of life and death, the sanctuary, is but a vision! Break! Naughty child, nap time. You can't run! <laughs> Try that again! <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Gotta try hard some- Watch this awesome move! Blaze! Lance! Forward! Time for a shot. <laughs> Not a scratch. You can't run! I have no interest in conflict. Uh. Told you I could fight. Uh. Uh. That's better. Uh, thanks Lance a at the lot. ready. Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! I'm okay. Try that again. You're annoying. Gotta try hard sometime. Watch this awesome move. I've no interest in conflict. Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Don't worry about me. I'm on guard. <laughs> Try that again. You can't run. Lance at the ready. My turn! I'm okay. Try that again! You can't run! Top lock running it up! Not enough time. Truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Fighting is meaningless. You have the worst! Naughty chill. You're in bad shape. Step aside. I have no. Time for a nap time.
Reach the end of the story in your own way. to both of you. Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves. But, uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pentacone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. 
Welcome to the 33rd Scotch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises Superstar Showdown. I think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. Are you... a knight of beauty? Right. This magnificent dream is built upon the Stellaron and the countless sacrifices of many people. Bear witness to honor. Try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move! Rise to the challenge. Move carefully. Naughty children, you're in bad shape. You have the worst luck! Lance at the ready. Step aside. I'm okay. Try that again! The truth of life and death, revealed in this sanctuary, is but a vision! Scratch the flesh wound! Yeah. Not a scratch. You can't run! Let the duel commence. Savor the vigor of <laughs> My turn! Rise to the challenge. I'm on guard. <laughs> Clemency? Never heard of it. <laughs> My gallant friend, put forth all your might. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> Just in time. Just a little something. <laughs> Think nothing of it. Don't worry about me. <laughs> time nap time. You're annoying! Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move! <laughs> Lance ablaze! Flaming Lance! Forward! Rise to the challenge! You have the worst luck running behind this! <laughs> It's too late to repent. Flash thy loyalty. I'm okay. Go away. You can't run. Behold this symbol of pure beauty. Favor the vigor. Step aside. I have no interest. Oh, the flesh wound. Yeah. The truth of life and death, revealed in an end this sanctuary, 
is but a vision. Revealed in an in this sanctuary is but a vision. Bear witness to honor. Not a scratch. <laughs> Time for a shot. <laughs> nice teamwork. Clemency never hurt. <gasps> Fighting a gentleman, my gallant friend. Put forth all your might. I just have to keep going. Here comes the medicine. This can't play. I'm loyal.
No way, I... I think I just saw someone. Someone extra... of life and death with the sanctuary is but a vision break bear witness to me try that again that's better you can't run gotta try hard sometime watch this awesome move i'm on guard Fighting a gentleman. Confess! Uh, Rise to the Lance of Blaze. Lance! Forward! Next time. Fighting is meaningless. You can't run! Put forth all your might! Uh, try that again! Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Thanks a lot! Lands at the ready. Hmm. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! Behold, the symbol of pure... Yeah. Rise to the challenge. Gotta try hard sometime. Watch this awesome move. I'm on guard. <laughs> That'll take me. <laughs> Let the duel commence. Put forth all your might. Try that again. Okay. You can't run! <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. Nice teamwork. Have no interest in conflict. <laughs> the truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Tough luck running into me! <laughs> Time for a shot. That's better. Lands at the ready. <laughs> Not a scratch. Rise to the Lance of Blaze. Lance! Forward! Uh, confess! Uh. Go away! Uh. Gotta try hard some- Watch this awesome move! Bear witness. To me. Fighting is meaningless. Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Don't worry about me. You are 
fighting a gentleman. Let's run with it. The truth of life and death revealed in an instant. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Try that again. Naughty child. That's better. <laughs> Put forth all your might! <laughs> Lance ablaze! Lance! Forward! Don't worry about me. Just, Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Nice teamwork. Behold, this symbol of pure. I'm okay. You can't run! Too late to repent. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Watch this awesome move! I've no interest in conflict. Time for a shot. <laughs> you are fighting a gentleman. Put forth all your might. Uh, try that again. Rise to the Lands at the ready. Naughty child. That's better. <laughs> you! <laughs> you can't run! <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. <sighs> Thanks a lot! <laughs> Try that again! Fighting is meaningless. <laughs> the truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! I'm on guard. <laughs> Bear witness. To uh, you can't run! Tough luck running into me! Uh, no interest in conflict. Uh, Let the duel commence. Let's run with I'm okay. Gotta try hard sometime. Watch this awesome move! Uh, Lands at the ready. Uh, uh, No way, I... I think I just saw someone. Someone... Are you... That's right! Behold, this symbol of pure- You're annoying! Move carefully. Turn up my wound! No time. <laughs> you are fighting a gentleman. Put forth all your might! Oh. Try that again! Rise to the fighting challenge. is meaningless. I'm on guard. Try that again. 
Pledged on you! You can't run! Rise to the Gotta challenge. try hard sometime! Watch this awesome move! The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! Not time. Bear witness. To you! Tough luck running into me! I've no interest in conflict. Lands at the ready. Naughty child. Don't worry about me. Just, Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Thanks a lot. Let the duel commence. Confess. <sighs> Try that again. Lance ablaze! Lance! Forward! Put forth all your might! Try that again! I'm on guard! <laughs> That'll take more than medic. <laughs> the truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Right. Try hard, son. Watch this awesome move. Behold, this symbol of pure. You can't run. Rise to the challenge. Good up, that wound. Time for a shot. That's better. <gasps> Lands up ready. <laughs> Duck the flesh wound. You are fighting a gentleman. Forth all your might! Not You're scratch. My turn! <laughs> Here! <gasps> you can't run! <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. Nice teamwork. Now, I'm on guard. That rise to the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Try that again! Gotta try hard sometime. Watch this awesome move! Let's uh, on you! Yes. Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision! Break! Hmm. Ah, thanks a lot! Bear witness to me. But I'm a. I've no interest in conflict. Lance! Forward! <laughs> Let the duel commence. Confess! I'm okay. No way, I... I think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. No way, I... I think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. Right. This magnificent dream is built upon the Stellaron and the countless sacrifices of many people. If I'm 
I'm not wrong. The Knights of Beauty also received an invitation from the Watchmaker, right? Actually, uh... We've already met the Watchmaker. Thank you, Knight of Beauty. We don't have much time left. May we meet again. In that case, let's make our way to the end. Panacone's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival before entering the Grand Theater. I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you, wishing you joy under their radiance. <laughs> Your endeavors are worthy of extra recognition, and I've taken steps to ensure that. However, this reward is not a material one, but rather the opportunity for an open and honest communication between us. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Panacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Panacone would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Panacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Panacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. 
That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the Charmody Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This, this is, is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold the position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Hmm. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master. It's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Sunday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I trust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on Earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself, always heeding their admonishments? Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith. 
and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the Great One, Shibei? Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverend hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, Echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday. Please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's a pity that things have turned out this way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Panacuni is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipei. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Panacone. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. Oh, I intend to. But that hinges on the outcome of this negotiation. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. 
The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. That means... Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so he should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Penacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in later on. Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony Dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. Interesting. Since you've made up your mind, 
Allow me to reveal what fate this choice will bring to the fledgling. From what I've observed, there are at least three predators in that yard that prey on small birds. The Vosical Scorpion, Asdana Wolverine, and the Huntington Winged Snake. Even if they shy away from humans, these animals are still near apex predators in a fenced location like a yard. In such a location, only one fate awaits that little Charmony dove. A painful death. As for the choice you made, I am deeply sorry. Now, let us advance to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of Dreamscape residents, and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the Dreamscape. Joy. Sorrow. Arrogance. Regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser. And an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me. I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that at least they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds after hearing the Dream Chaser's story. I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels? And I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. I'm honored to witness you arriving at the same decision. Out of respect, I'll share with you the dire consequences that my choice back then brought about. First, the outcome. He attained major success. After avoiding capture, he ran a business for a few years, very quickly making a name for himself, elevating his status. He might not have become a tycoon like old Artie, but he was considered a character of excellent repute. Now then, did he realize the wish he set out to achieve? No. The last time I saw him was in the real world, where the Hounds were going to permanently exile him, and I was the accompanying Bronze Melodia. The mission was simple. Listen to the criminal's repentance. He told me the reason he was in this predicament was because he conspired to usurp the head of the Alfalfa family. 
When I asked him about his two children, he instead responded with a question. What children? In the end, my heart aligned with the harmony, and the good deed I dared to undertake held no value, turning instead into a wrongdoing. It created a lamentable oppressor and countless oppressed individuals. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision, and the story this time is my own. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master, and as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck directly Yet, possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony, it didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Those damned savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? How could this happen? Miss Robin? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise, I've prepared one last question, one last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences, because this is merely a figment of imagination, a nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order 
where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented. The turmoil of losing your way. How sorrow, and even despair, set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain. Because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion, a cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. During these hard-earned rest days, People are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. <sighs> Like a flawless theory. <sighs> but what is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary awakening until the end of the cosmos. Awakening. Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. 
If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature and from there show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? <laughs> because I don't think so. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Penacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles, but... If you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as Dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm... I guess... Maybe this way? 